So in this video, I wanted to continue talking about protecting techniques. And if you remember the last video, I talked specifically about signatures. What I want to talk about in this video are heuristics. And heuristics are basically approaches to detecting malware that help us get past the, the kind of known malware hump, so to speak, that traditional signatures succumb to. So the idea is that with the heuristic, what you're looking for are um, so-called telltale signs. So let me write that down. So you're looking for telltale signs that something is malware. So, uh, and by telltale sign, I mean some type of a rule of thumb, just something that tells you that, hey, this file can't possibly be good, even though I don't know what it is specifically or what threat it represents. I know that for some reason this file just just has the wrong kinds of attributes. It just looks bad. And you know, when, the way I like to think about it is, it's me by way of analogy. Imagine you're you're trying to determine if a neighborhood is safe. Um, what you can do is you can look up existing police reports on the neighborhood, which is kind of like a signature-based approach. You're looking at what has already been known about that neighborhood. Alternatively, you could go to the neighborhood and you could look at it and if you saw, let's say, lots of trash in the street and you know bullet holes in storefronts and things of that nature, then you can make a pretty accurate guess that that neighborhood is unsafe, even though you don't know its specific crime statistics or even though there's no police reports associated with it or you haven't found any, you can determine it's unsafe just by the way it looks. Now, in the context of malware, there are typically two classes of heuristics. So you typically have what we call static or passive heuristics static or passive heuristics and these are uh, heuristics that effectively can be determined by just looking at static contents and for example you can look at attributes contained from scanned binary contents of the file itself so for example if you had a file and it had a bunch of lines of code in it and let's say this was uh, all in binary of some sort you can you can look at a dump of the binary contents and the heuristics can be derived, static heuristics can be derived specifically by looking at these contents of the file. Now the other class of heuristics are what we call active heuristics. Active heuristics. And active heuristics, in contrast to static heuristics, refer to attributes collected during execution and possibly even in a controlled environment. So for example, you might imagine here's a file okay, and it's got code in it, that code runs on the system. As it runs, it's doing things like maybe it's making a network connection, so maybe it's, uh, it's connecting to the cloud somewhere, or maybe that file is, is writing something to the file system that you can look at. So if you've got a, a computer, you imagine the, the file is writing something to the system, it's making changes, it's doing copies, it's moving, it's executing, and so on and so forth. You can look at these characteristics and use them to derive active heuristics about what the file might be doing. Now, I also mentioned you might want to do this in a controlled environment. So for example, you can imagine that instead of running the file standalone, you can imagine you're running the file inside of some type of a sandbox or controlled environment, or maybe you're emulating the actual execution of the file. And rather than actually letting it properly run, you're kind of pretending to let it run and then figuring out what it might be doing in those cases. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of passive heuristics, let me give you some examples of passive heuristics. Uh, so one example of a passive heuristic might be whether there are sections of the file that are both readable and writable. So are there readable and writable sections? Readable, so readable, writable, and executable, assuming everything is readable. So readable, writable, and executable sections. And the reason I say that's interesting is that if you've got a section of a file that is both, let's say this, let's say this particular section of the file happen to be one that you can both execute and you can also write to. That is suspicious because most legitimate software instances will never have a reason to simultaneously write and execute against one portion of the file, whereas malware that is polymorphic, so we talked about polymorphism in an earlier video, malware that's polymorphic will have these types of sections. So typically with, with polymorphic malware, if you recall, Polymorphic malware is one where the malware might encrypt certain sections of itself and then decrypt it on the fly. And when you have to decrypt something, you're effectively writing to a particular section of the file and then you're executing the contents of that section. So if you do see an encrypted section, it's a sign that some type of obfuscation is taking place. Okay, another thing you can do to, as a heuristic is you can determine whether a particular file, does it look random? 
is there a part of the file that looks like it's it's encrypted uh, in and of itself? And again, that might be an indication that the file is compressed or maybe packed. And if so, then all else being equal, you might be a bit more likely to be dealing with malware. Now, of course, uh, whether or not any of these single attributes alone don't tell you, may or may not tell you everything about whether the file is malicious or benign, but in concert, maybe you can take many, many attributes, so you can you can make a determination on many attributes. So make a determination on many attributes. Based on many attributes. And in fact, one thing we typically see in practice is a lot of people will use what are called machine learning techniques. And we'll often see uh, people leverage or use this terminology. What machine learning techniques allow you to do, maybe I'll do a future video on them in general, but machine learning techniques allow you to take a series of attributes and they'll effectively come up with a model automatically based on those attributes for being able to determine if the object that has those attributes can be classified in one place or another. So in the context of, of malware, you can imagine that if I extract a bunch of attributes, you can now apply a machine learning technique to tell me, that based on all these attributes collectively, can you tell me if this file is good or bad? Okay, and, and what the nice part about this is that you can combine weak attributes. So these don't have to be, in of themselves, like for example, just knowing whether a section is readable and, and, and writable and executable simultaneously, that in and of itself may not be enough for you to go ahead and, and convict the file and say it's bad conclusively. Similarly, just because there's some encrypted portions, that might not be enough. But let's say you look at that in conjunction with some other heuristics. Maybe you have 10 or 20 or 30 attributes you look at, and those 30 attributes together might tell you that the file is malicious, but each of the attributes alone, each at individual attribute might be very weak and that it may not tell you specifically whether the file is good or bad, but it gives you just a bit more of an indication and over time and with more attributes, you can make a more and more conclusive determination about that file. Okay? So for that reason, because heuristics are able to capture new files and capture threats that previously were unknown to signatures, they do tend to be used by a lot of major anti-malware technologies. It's also important to keep in mind that heuristics are prone to false positives. They're more prone to false positives than, than traditional signatures. So they're more FP prone. And the reason they're more FP prone is they're casting a wider net. So they're looking at, they're basically targeting large classes of files that might have particular sets of attributes. So rather than saying you're looking for one specific threat that a signature might be doing, a heuristic is really much more about saying, does this file have these general characteristics? And, and maybe many files have those characteristics. And because they cast a wider net, they may inadvertently catch something that is benign. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense. Uh, what I'll do in this video is I'll, I'll maybe cut this video a bit short. In the next video, uh, I'll talk more about active heuristics. And in this current video, I talk more about passive heuristics, but we'll focus on active heuristics in the next video. And I hope you join me for that.